Welcome back to another video. Obviously, if you've seen the title, uh, you will know what is about to go down. We're going to start off though by saying what a beautiful evening it is because it is a August day. It's about 20 degrees and look at the sunshine. Don't get many evenings like this, so we're taking full advantage of it. Uh, and we're going to wash the 180. It's still a bit dirty from NEC. Um, there's loads of mud up in the arches as well. Not that you can see. Don't really know what I'm showing you. Uh, but believe me, there's mud in the arches and stuck to the underside from like T side last year. So I'm going to give it a quick wash and clean all the crap off it before I fit the new uh, coilovers. Uh, and then we'll go from there. Noisy. So I'm just going to crack the wheel bolts off while it's on the ground, then jack it up, take the wheels off and then I can properly steam clean the underside. I say steam clean, I mean pressure wash, there's no steam in it. Right, that is the back wheels or wheel arches all clean. Now we need to jump inside, turn it round and get the front all clean. So front and rear wheel arches all blasted off, all like clean and ready for the new suspension to go on. As you can see, it's getting dark. And I am waiting to get on the ramp. But there is a GTR on the ramp at the moment. So I've got to wait my turn. Um, and since it is getting quite late, I will probably head home before I actually manage to get the suspension off. Uh, and I'll return in the morning and we'll crack on with it. So yeah, see you in the morning. And we're back once more in the workshop. It is now morning. It is 8.15 a.m., bright and early. Gonna try and make a full day of it and get the coilovers fitted on the RX-8, no, on the 180SX. Um, where do we start? The workshop is a bit of a mess. We've kind of been doing some uh, work to the roof to try and seal it a bit better for winter kind of winter proof it because this place is cold in the winter I know, I know it's August now but before you know it it'll be getting dark early and uh, winter time will be upon us I know it's a depressing thought so enough of that let's look at the coilovers they are Driftworks CS2s they're made by HSD so I do have HSDs at the moment on the car uh, I think they're the Mono Pros, Mono Sport or something like that. Um, so these are basically an upgrade on those. They've got uh, the helper springs here, uh, a slimmer spring profile, I believe. They've also got these, um, which I believe are caster adjustable top mounts. Or is that camber? Not sure. <laughs> One of the two. Um, what else can I say about them? Uh, they're just overall supposedly uh, a bit better, a bit better quality. I believe they have like roller bearing spring perches, um, which should make the steering bind a little bit less. So I wasn't sure whether to spend a bit more on suspension and try and go for a like more a race style suspension, like some of the Formula Drift drivers and uh, European drivers are using, say maybe Phil suspension or uh, one of those brands who are obviously into drifting. I know Odie Batches, Formula D driver, uh, runs a company, Phil Suspension, and James Dean and the likes of use their suspension and a lot of other drivers. Uh, but for me, I wanted to try the CS2s. They were kind of the budget option, I guess. I thought 
let's do some uh, research and actually try those and see how we get on with them. If I don't feel that they're making a uh, making the car drive the way I want it to, then perhaps I'll upgrade again in the future. Uh, but for now, we're going to try those and see how we get on. Luckily, coilovers on S13s couldn't be easier to change. Two bolts at the top, one bolt at the bottom. Easy. So the coilovers are now off and on the floor. As you can see, they're kind of looking a little bit grubby and kind of worn out and tired. Uh, they probably still function okay, but yeah, they could do a good clean up and re-grease them. Uh, one of the things that I was going to mention is the spring rates. I think the front spring rates are 8k, uh, and I'm not sure about the rears. I was thinking they were around six. Might be wrong. The or five perhaps. Uh, is five or six is the, are the numbers that stick in my head. The new CS2s are nine and seven. Uh, seven might be too much for the back. It might make it too stiff uh, and it won't squat. But Driftworks do other rear springs or front springs as well. So what I may do is purchase uh, a set of uh, four or five K uh, rear springs uh, and give them a try. But first off, thought I'd see with um, the seven K springs, see how I get on and uh, see if that's the winning combo or not. If not, then we'll change it. So, got the rear coilovers fitted. Uh, installed, working tidy. Just gonna put the rear wheels on for now. Just gonna put the rear wheels on uh, and we'll worry about like corner balancing it and aligning it at a later stage. Currently in the process of removing the front setup. So I've got my mate Ash working away over there and he's replaced well removed all of this side got the strut uh, lower arm and disc and everything on the floor so we will get it all off uh, and then we'll start fitting the new stuff and in case you were wondering why we've taken all of the uh, hub assembly and kind of lower suspension components off there's very good reason for that and that is that we are now going for wise fab uh, it's something i've wanted to run for a long time and i believe it is kind of fundamental to making the car handle uh, as good as possible i guess making it into a, a more competitive car or at least on paper and in theory it should be a lot of top drivers are using wise fab uh, anyone who's winning anything around the world in general they'll be using wise fab so why not? Let's give it a go. I went for the version 2 S14 kit with a rack relocation. Uh, the version 2 kit offers quite a lot of benefits over the version 1, mainly in ease of setup and installation. It's kind of a bit more, uh, I'd say it's a bit more minimalistic. There's less brackets on there, less faffing around, drilling holes and stuff like that. It's kind of more of a bolt-on solution, which is obviously what everyone wants. Uh, the reason I went for the rack relocation is because it offers additional benefits in moving the rack forward. Le there's a lot less chance of steering bind. I'm not actually going to run the rack relocation to start with. I'm going to try it with my current relocated rack only because of time. I need to get it ready for the next round of the British Drift Championship, which is in about four weeks time. So I will uh, probably do that over the winter period, get the rack relocated. I've got a spare um, front cross member. So we'll worry about that at a later date. But yeah, the next thing to do, get rid of the front anti-roll bar. I'm gonna trial the Wise Fab kit without the anti-roll bar. It, this one won't fit anyway, so I need to take it off regardless. I need to take off the track rods as well, because they will be replaced with the new Wise Fab ones, which I believe, or led to believe, are Volkswagen uh, inner rods. At least one good thing about removing the anti-roll bar is it's a little bit of weight saving. It's quite heavy. But obviously, 
if it's required then I'll end up putting an anti roll bar back on um, probably the GK Tech one was designed for uh, big angle lock kits kind of works and gives you uh, gives you your maximum wheel with tyre clearance so it doesn't come into contact uh, under full lock so the first thing for us to do is install these little spacers which go in between the uh, in between the tie rod and the steering rack and they go just in position like that and they just kind of space it out obviously if you buy the offset rack spacer version uh, you'll have the same thing but they'll be offset instead of relocating the rack but because my rack is already relocated uh, possibly in the region of 25 30 mil uh, i'm going to try it without and see how we get on just for interest and time saving purposes uh, so i'll get the tie rods on next and then we can start with the coilovers and the top mats uh, i just wanted to pause for a second to pick up a camera uh, instead of rushing ahead even further just to show basically the difference between the top mounts uh, so this is the original one that came with the uh, Driftworks CO2 coilovers CO2? CS2 um, it's got your camber adjustment there and also uh, a bit of caster I believe uh, that in comparison to the WiseFab one or WiseFab version 2 one uh, it obviously relocates the position of the shock so whereas the CO CS2 can't even speak would sit uh, more like in the center this one will sit like that so it kind of pushes the whole shock further away from the car so that's one thing to consider if you are going for wise fab just to make sure that your uh, suspension is compatible I mean I assume that a lot of coilovers will be compatible but obviously not all of them I imagine so yeah let's carry on so next up I installed the uh, lower arms for the wise fab kit which are these uh, I guess they've got the good thing about the wise fab is they look like they use very similar types of joints either end uh, and it's all one piece instead of having the two piece arms like this with multiple kind of adjustments and different styles obviously there's more to go wrong and go lo come loose on that style of um, alignment arms compared to this obviously very basic but hopefully very strong and uh, very awesome but we'll see so yeah both sides on now I can put the hubs on uh, or the knuckles whatever you want to call them uh, and then the coilovers and top mounts So we're really kind of steaming ahead with this now. Uh, one side is almost complete, all fitted up uh, with the exception of the track rod, which I'll do at a later stage. Okay, so all finished now. I raced ahead and put it all on without filming too much uh, because I need to get out of here. I need to go and get some dinner and go and see the family. Um, but yeah, we will finish up doing what we can on another day. 